out today at uh, Dimple Records. They had vinyl day out at Dimple Records. Cool. So, yeah. So they had cool. a live band out there, and they had, and it was essentially all these record collectors, which I happen to be a, I collect vinyl, a lot of it. And so we went out there and we shot a video. We're going to put it on the web, but sportsguypatwalsh.com. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm noticing in this group here, got some. Hey, watch, a couple watch different the page. generations here. Watch, watch the page. <laughs> and, and I found it interesting today that you haven't said anything, Oregon. Come on now. <laughs> Best um, school there is, right there. The younger guys here. I mean, uh, yeah, Oregon right is a great school. <laughs> well, um, you're Oregon. Oregon. You're supposed to be West Point. I don't care about West Point. Nothing <laughs> 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 in Oregon, Sam. It's not big. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking we need duck tags. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you duck understand they are the beaver state. So you guys, what could be so wrong with that? <laughs> so, so you, you guys, you younger guys, you own any albums, or is that like this, just this? Do you even know old, what an album is? Out, they, I, I mean, is there any the interest in that kind of cool. stuff? Cool, I know. <laughs> I think That's I still got one. Just like when, we, you know, when I was, I know, what's that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I always thought it was cool. You know, you look at the album cover, check it all out. You know, maybe you haven't heard of the band, but it looked cool. You know. Uh, I'll spend my money on this one, buy it, and you take it home, and either socks or, you know, well, you, you got a gem, you know. But well, we did the same thing uh, in this generation, I would say, with CDs instead. Mm -hmm. uh, they had they had album covers as well. Mm -hmm. um, you pull it out, and there'd be a couple of pictures of the band, maybe some artwork and whatnot. And, and that's a good point that. too. And I think that's I think that's when we kind of come together is the CD, you know, because probably some of us were into records, then CDs came along. Now it goes with CDs. Now you've seen the CDs. Now it's just downloading. Yeah. So now you're not looking at any album covers, any oh, liner notes. Oh, it's it's just patents, just the music. Did you ever play with a zipper? On oh, <laughs> on sticky fingers? Yeah, absolutely. You can. Wow, yeah. it zips. You know? Oh, yeah. You can't zip an MP3 download. No, it doesn't right? work. Now that well, you can. can. Right. Well, you can. can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing my age. <laughs> But I mean, do you guys think that's? Do you guys think you're missing out on anything, or is that just like uh, you At know? At the same time, I don't think our music is nearly as good. No, I don't. Right. Oh. Uh, that I agree with. Oh, I, me know, too. You listen to our music. You know, you turn on the. I, I listen to country personally. That's what I listen to. Uh, it definitely isn't as good then. <laughs> <laughs> but. You look at our music and it's dead within three or four weeks. It's yeah. dead. Oh, you, oh you, my dad, I, I love it. He listens to the, he li actually, he's a big fan of Frank Sinatra. Cool. And uh, yeah, I man. actually grew up on Frank Sinatra. Right on. And I think his music is just a, a, a thousand times better. Yeah. All right. Or, man. Well, more of an art. We can actually more sing more without art. yelling. Yes. Well, I think well, the first, only the person genres. in this room that has a generation that had real talent is Edge Generation. Yeah. Those were the last talented artists, yeah. I believe. Thank you. Yeah. Glenn Miller, Andrew Sisters, people that actually had to sing mm -hmm. and yes. didn't have to worry about their image. What? Things like that. The beginning of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. well, now you've yeah. All the great yeah. songs well, I still songs. play, yeah. and I go back to the 50s. Yeah. Fats Domino mm -hmm. and uh, the Big Bopper. Big Here's Bopper there. and all those guys. Oh. You can yeah. understand what they were saying, yeah. and they had original music. Well, so much of it today is not original. It was more about the music than it is the image. But yours is born on a stage with actual yeah. microphones, not in a studio. That's right. And that's the problem. Everything is mixed in a studio now. It's all digitized. There's no real talent there. No, no. I, so. I think I will say this. I think there's lots of talent out there. The trouble is, is it's not mass market. You have to go to, you have to, go to places where people do it for the love of the art. Yeah. They're not getting paid to, you know, dive bars, jazz bars, piano bars, symphonies. They're People are marketing. still doing it. They're not, they're not marketing in the same way. The thing is, is, you know, in this society, it's faster, 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 faster. It's going to continue that the, Well, sure. The MP3 is faster, faster, the faster. Nintendo society. Well, sure it is. Sure it is. But it's, it's the money. You know what I mean? <laughs> Producers discovered that... And this actually, can, you can start back to the 60s. You know, guys like the Monkees or, you know, people, the, the British Invasion. They said, well, we don't really need guys who can play like the Beatles. We just need guys we can make sound, sound like the Beatles for a year. And then we can market a television series and put T-shirts on. Well, now, with the technology that they've got, they don't have to wait. They can get me in there, and I can sing horribly off-key, and they do a... 
and all of a sudden I sound like auto tuner. Yeah, yep. yeah. I, or either that, or they can make me sound like you know Pavarotti on crack. Whatever it is that they need <laughs> to make it sound. Since you grew up on uh, Frank Sinatra and all that stuff in your uh, in, in your household, I mean, you uh, you have appreciation for that kind of music. Too? I really do, actually. Uh, he, he doesn't like the fact that I was in the country, but uh, no, I really do I like. I think I admit that in public. <laughs> What, uh, what's that? Did you like country? What's wrong with country? <laughs> what is wrong? With yeah, what's wrong with country? Yeah. Let's, let's let's go back, Merle Haggard. That well, that's I'm right. Okay with that? Yeah, me too. Yeah. That's country. Yep. Hank Williams, brother. Not today. Come on. Every, all the guys in country music today, they got hats on and they got a southern accent. That makes them a star. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Taylor Swift is my wife. Are you kidding me? She's my wife. <laughs> it's a pop with a twang. Yes, yeah, yes it is. It's well, a great. Country. Well, what they did is they discovered that, that again. It sells. It They're does. Not, they don't go with the guys. They, they don't want just their Nashville base. You know, with the songs that mm-hmm. my two cats, my six dogs, and my eighteen wives left me. People, general people. <laughs> you know that song? Uh, sing that one. <laughs> when they were able to market it to the MTV generation, Shania Twain, Alan Jackson, uh, Garth Brooks, these individuals who were able to cross over, some of it produced really good stuff. I happen to enjoy a lot of what Garth Brooks did early on. Doug Stone. Well, but what, what happened, I think, with Garth Brooks, at least with that, I, I think Garth Brooks was a little bit more of a victim of his own success mm-hmm. because he thought he couldn't do anything wrong. Sure, of course. And when he tried to come up with that new character, yeah, that he yeah, had, right. everyone yeah. was kind of looking at him like, huh? Yeah. Well, even Who after, are you again? Yeah, after all, he's all like, oops, screwed up. Dad, yeah, I guess I'm going back to country. He tried to get back into the it. business with what Walmart. Like, country, country was guns, ahead. Like that. Huh? Country was Brooks way ahead guns. of the MTV generation Brooks with Grand Old Opry and anything like that. So it wasn't just image because back then they were able to market those people to a TV audience. Oh, sure. But again, it was a, it was a, it was something, you know, again, it just kind of, the marketing thing just kind of exploded. You know, you had, there was a time in the early 90s where every other dance bar was a country western line dancing bar. I remember, that. I remember yeah. going to those things where people who had never worn a 10 gallon hat in their life or a cowboy boots are suddenly wearing belt buckles that cover up, they look like WWE championship belts. They're just <laughs> big old rhinestone looking <laughs> bastards like this. I mean, I the whole six pack exactly. <laughs> Chewing tobacco, spitting, you know. Don't forget the Wranglers. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this place ain't complete without a mechanical bull. Where's the mechanical bull? Sounds like we're dumping on country here, Ken Dog. Yeah, well, I'm not a huge country fan, but what I'm not, it's not the music that I'm jumping on. Again, it's that marketing thing. It's the fact that if you go down to Nashville or you go down to this, the, the standard home of country, I'm sure you'll find plenty of artists who are mid level who probably are doing the stuff that you would consider. Pure country. And you find them in bars like you were talking about mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. I've been to Nashville and there's some great music. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is, is it just me because I'm the older generation? But does it all sound the same? Some of the yes. rock and roll, oh, yeah. the country, the music, there's nothing, there's no sax that come in. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. just no originality. Boom. Going yeah. back to, you can't tell one from the other. Going you back to Frank Sinatra. Uh, just the big band, how it actually took talent. Oh, sure. It oh, took yeah. years and years of appreciation well, for that. You put a 17 piece band together, man, that takes and a lot of time just to put it together, let alone play the music. Yeah, uh-huh. Dean Martin didn't need a big, you know, egg. He's, he wasn't in an egg as they carried him out on stage like Lady Gaga. He didn't need all the hype and the, uh-huh. the weird marketing. Well, before they cover up her face, she is it was, yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just went out there and did his thing, man, you know? If you go. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, uh, I was just going to say, I'm, uh, as far as mentioning Lady Gaga, my God, you have a, a huge freak factor there. It's like wa- driving by a car accident. Yeah. Everyone wants to look at her instead of actually treating her with what she deserves is to be ignored. Well, the lady has no talent. Well, understand that she is one of those who decides that, who has decided, for whatever reason, or handlers yeah. or whoever has decided that the show is more important than the music. The show is huge. They'll put on, I don't, I can't imagine how much a production of what she puts on or her, I mean, it's got to be okay, a small so feature film. Go back several years to a Genesis concert. Mm-hmm. That was a show. Sure. All the laser lights and stuff that they had, going, but it was also very oh, good of music. Of course it was. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. What about Pink Floyd? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dark 
Side of the Moon's got to be one of the greatest albums ever, oh, yeah. ever produced. No doubt. And that I, and Sgt. Pepper. Absolutely. Well, he also had, even since, smaller bands doing the same thing. Iron Maiden was doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. and, and still are. Yes. But yeah. they're not as a widely known band as, you know, Aerosmith or anyone else that we've been discussing here. Sure. But they do a fantastic show. Mm -hmm. 